All right, so chaos engineering. How many people here use chaos engineering? Not know of it, use it. Oh, I see a few hands, cool. So we're here to talk about it. What is it and why should you care? Um, I'm Matthew Brahms, I'm a site reliability engineer. So first you may be thinking for reals. Oh yeah, really, this is a thing, right? So we see here in 2010, Netflix created their first chaos thing. We call it the chaos monkey. It would go in and terminate instances inside of AWS randomly to help their resiliency. Um, chaos engineering here is a discipline of experimenting on a distributed system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. They now have like a chaos engineering role at Netflix you can apply and have an actual engineering job as. But here's an alternative definition you might like. Bad things will happen to your system no matter how well you design it, period. So you can't become ignorant to it, as Yoda would say. Ignorant you must not be. So my question I would pose to you is, do you really want to be that person? Is it fine with you or your organization that perhaps you didn't test something and you find out in your outage, oh, we could have found this a couple weeks ago because we didn't know we had this single point of failure? That's what chaos engineering is in a nutshell about. So what should you do? You should be like Guilfoyle, right? It's not magic, it's talent and sweat. So we're gonna talk about a fast primer here about how to get started with chaos engineering. And by short, I mean like, I think 75 seconds short. So it's a discipline, first of all. It's not a process. So you can't say, oh, if I just like throw these things into my pipeline, I have chaos engineering, right? You can't do that. It's also a principled effort, so you have to be smart about it. And also the implementation of chaos engineering is super different for every organization, right? So the first thing you wanna do is have a careful thought in your head and know what your, distrib what your distributed system does. Like, what is it? So you might wanna sit down and get a whiteboard with your team and say, hey, let's graph out our enti entire system and then say, what can we do to attack it? Where might it fail? Be responsible, right? Your first test case shouldn't be, let's try to attack or delete our production database in RDS and see how our app behaves. That's not cool, right? So be smart about it, right? Here's some good examples. What happens if we were to unexpectedly lose a node in our cloud provider? Hmm. What happens if our CPU utilization on like all of our front-end servers were to go to 100% on all cores? What do you think would happen? We can guess, but can you prove it with data? We're all about measuring data here, right? So test your ideas. Be like Bill Nye. You need to find out two things, right? And this goes right down to the core tenets of SRE and DevOps. You need to have a way to test your ideas, and you need to have a way to measure the outcome of your experiment. So guess what? You'll need some tools. So good news, chaos tooling is available in many forms. Three big ones right now that the community is really getting behind is Chaos Toolkit. It's an open source project that can go through, and you can write scripts to attack specific things like AWS, your servers. There's also Gremlin, and Netflix has opened up theirs as well. Fully open source, right? I think in 2012, they open sourced their Chaos Monkey along with their whole Simeon army now. There's links there from the slides if you want to take a picture of those. Chaos Engineering, there's a boot camp as well, GitHub repo, go and try it. So the second thing is you gotta be able to see what's happening, right? So observability is a key tenet. You can pick a tool, any tool. Here's just some tools. I mean, Sumo Logic's up there, they're here, right? Like vendor shout out. But these tools we all know and use, they look like that when you run them, right? So if you were to simulate here, I simulated an attack on a single core on a Kubernetes host. Look at that. In Datadog, it shows that one of my cores, my CPU usage there is above 50%. How did that affect my front end, right? Hashtag so much fun. So cool, bro, now what? So it's important to codify your lessons learned from your failures. So if you run these experiments, you should write them down, talk about them, like tell them to the rest of your people. If your attack fails, you still may learn something, right? Like why it didn't work, right? Or that Kubernetes actually is resilient, right? If you attack it. Want to go next level? Plan a game day. So a game day is where you're gonna sit down with your team, focus on a way to attack something, go ahead and do it. Maybe in staging first, but if you feel really gutsy and you have some good recovery tools and you feel confident, try it in prod, right? So my last thing about why you might care is what's chaos engineering versus DevOps? How does this fit together? Is this even a thing? I mean, should I really care or is it just dumb, right? Let's check some boxes. It's the three cores of DevOps, our systems thinking. We all, if it's the three cores, let me move on. So where do you go from here? The good news, there is a, engineer, a, a community forming around it on Chaos Engineering Slack channel. The link is small, but you can pull it up later. Also, we just started an Austin Chaos Engineering Meetup. It's June 8th, I think, is the first meeting. Check it out. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, reach out to me on the Chaos Engineering Slack or find me here, and go forth in chaos. Thanks.